Uh, I'm going to let you start us off, Marcellus. Mm. Is this proof that a toxic environment follows LeBron? No, not at all. Um, I think this is proof that David Griffin has a different mindset than I think you need when you're blessed with the best. Uh, a fear of success comes to mind in David Griffin's uh, situation when he self-describes getting LeBron James in the building and literally falling on the floor in anxiety and tears because that wasn't the best thing. I, I, I don't know what you're built for, and people are built for different things. I don't know what your end game is, but getting the best player in your sport mm. brings you to the floor in tears and they're not of joy? That's a bad place to start. And everything else follows may be in direct correlation to that affected mindset, which is not a good one. Uh, LeBron James is, is suffering from what, I guess, superstars and even stars, anyone who ever makes it suffers from. You don't change first. Everything and everyone around you changes first in perception. Then you have to respond. When LeBron James lands in the building to go back home to Cleveland and say, this time I'm going to bring home the championship. I'm already a champion. Where's the embrace? Where's the let's go get this? Why the anxiety? Why the fear? It was a little more telling of someone I truly respect in David Griffin and his genius. But this mindset, that was a bad one. This is proof to me that the fear and the reverence of, of and for LeBron James is over. Because the reality is GMs and people running teams have felt this way going all the way back to Cleveland, Cleveland the first time that LeBron was there. Oh. In terms of the burden of having LeBron James and having him and now Rich Paul involved in everything and everything having to run through them and pass their muster. Every GM had to look at it and say, I'm basically abdicating my role. I am now serving this best player. Yeah. That was a price worth paying when it was delivering championships. But now, now that people are looking at it and saying, he ain't that. Mm. Now everybody is speaking out. That was the shocking part that David Griffin put his name on it. would put his name on it <laughs> and speak the truth. Because I talked to a lot of GMs and a couple of owners. Remember after, there was talk about should the Lakers trade LeBron James? Yeah, I remember that. Right? Uh, yeah. And I surveyed the league to find out what the level of interest would be. It wasn't there. There was a two, three years ago. Anybody would have paid anything to get LeBron. Now it was, you know what, we're not really in that place. And a lot of GMs were like, well, that, I got to give up my corner office to Rich Paul and I got to do what LeBron James wants me to do. I, I really don't want to sign up for that. That is what this is. Yeah, I think we're, and people are going to be upset and they're going to be a pop <laughs> but hmm. they, the NBA has created Frankenstein. And he, he drove a lot of TV ratings or whatever. But it got to a point where it's like, well, damn, no one can control him. No, no one can, and he'll turn on you yeah. very quickly and crush you uh, if given the opportunity. And so, look, man, this is, it, it sounds like a, just a terrible rebuke of LeBron, but, but it, it's really not because I think most individuals, given LeBron's circumstances, would do the exact same thing. Mm. If I grew up, without the strongest parental guidance and had to rely on me. And then I was blessed with these incredible once-in-a-lifetime athletic gifts that fixed a lot of problems, starting at about age 10. I would lean on that for the rest of my life. Yeah. You couldn't get me to come off of believing in me and what my physical gifts could produce. And so LeBron shows up in Cleveland the first time, and it ends with Dan Gilbert throwing his hands up and writing a letter and like, damn, I did everything. I, I gave him, and it was never enough. And now I'm bitter. He's a bitter ex-lover. He goes to Miami. Pat Riley, Eric Spolstra wrestle with him for four years. Pat Riley has to stop him from destroying Eric Spolstra. And when that's over, Pat Riley lets it out. Mm. Goes back to Cleveland. Same deal. Now we got David Griffin saying, and so the common denominator in all this is LeBron. Oh, yeah. And so we can't, we can put, oh, it's David Griffin and blah, blah, blah. It's this guy, it's this guy. 
LeBron's the common denominator. He, because of his unique circumstances, how he was upraised, the unique gifts, what his talents delivered him from, he has every reason to believe I am the solution. Yeah, it's interesting that all the circumstantial evidence can tally to say, LeBron, common denominator, you're the culprit. But that doesn't really address what David Griffin was talking about. Because David Griffin from hello, from day one. He had the scouting report, Marcella. Oh, look, reputation can... When I go to Moe's, they know what I'm going to do. Yeah, when yeah, they go yeah, to the cafeteria, yeah. they got the scouting report. They I, know. I, I hear you. Look, reputation <laughs> can precede you, LeBron, but it shouldn't impede you, David Griffin. And you made the fatal flaw in your head from day one to make that judgment before you even had that experience. And this is why when we talk about championships and how players need to put so much on their shoulder and we give them all the criticism, we never look upstairs with transparency and say, wait a minute, you don't even have a championship general manager. He doesn't even have the mindset to go at this. You just acquired the best player for hook or crook who gives a damn. I don't care about his personality right now. I'm going to get all of that talent out and of him. And he did. And wait a minute. Did he get it all? Yeah. Like, think about it. When you don't have the joy, the, 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 the belief, when you, don't, when you build a path of resistance, even if you get there, you could have got there a lot better without that resistance. David Griffin built that resistance because of the reputation of LeBron. And because of the reality. Well, he because learned of, Because, again, Le LeBron basically put it in his letter in Sports Illustrated. Andrew Wiggins out, Kevin Love in. Hmm. That was the first that thing he did to that undermine the general manager. And he shouldn't have done that. And right. And so that was before <laughs> that they said that hello. Was, right. So he told you. No, no. Everything you've heard from Pat Riley is true. I'm about to come here, me and Rich Paul and Maverick, and we're in control. Well, what about the fact that David said... I'm better in New Orleans. It, it, before in Cleveland, I was happy just building this thing slowly. Sure. Never getting there, but slowly. Who wants this managing expectations in the NBA versus let me go get my chip with the best that could Let's go? be fair. He hadn't been there long enough to determine that David Griffin wasn't going to be able to get it done in Cleveland. It's no, not no. as if he was there four or five years and they hadn't gone anywhere. LeBron comes in back in and, and, and saves the day. But this is much like Luke Walton being hired by the Lakers, mm. David Griffin being hired by the Cavaliers. You've been hired to do one thing, and now you get LeBron James, and everything changes. And, oh, by the way, LeBron James isn't sure you're the guy for the job. So to have that flipped on its head, I understand where Griffin would look at that and say, okay, but I have LeBron James. I'm supposed to win. The Warriors, that, that, that's, the, that's the issue here when it comes to how he feels. It's the pressure of winning. When you have LeBron James, just like the Warriors in the last year, when you're expected to win and, not, and anything else is a failure, that creates a pressure where there's no redeeming value. It's I can only, I can only hold serve. I can only match expectation. To me, that's what has you weeping in a closet uh, over this, but uh, the the, mm. the piece that was done, the, the the quote here is, the reason is LeBron is getting all the credit and none of the blame, and that's not fun for people. They don't like being part of that world. This goes back to what we just talked about yesterday, and why it becomes so challenging for everybody around LeBron because of his greatness, because of his accomplishments. It's always everybody else's fault when anything goes sideways. And if it's success, well, it's because you had LeBron James. That's a very difficult measure to fill. You could be doing a fantastic job. The biggest reason, or one of the big reasons why this show is a success. And yet, if it's all about Jason, and no matter what you do, it's either you're allowing Jason to make this a great show, or, you know what, Marcellus is just, he's dragging us down. That's a really tough place to live in if that's not reality. It, it, but if it is reality, who cares about the perception of that? Now, I understand that some people are not built for that. And that's why Jerry West needs to hold a damn seminar. And you know who needs to be in the front row? <laughs> David Griffin needs to be front row listening astutely to the Kobe Shaq days, to other greats that have played this game, and it comes with the territory of greatness. You, you got some personalities to deal with and manage. And if you're not in this game beyond roster construction, maybe you didn't read your description of your job title well enough, because that's what it is. Jerry West is still at the tender age of 80, still out there doing this I'm gonna and managing say this. personalities. I, I, Come on, David. I, I'm going to say this, though, and again... 
I've been a critic of Kobe's. Kobe and LeBron are different uh, how they operate personality-wise. No, oh, yeah. How they interact with management. And look, did Kobe go in there and make some demands? Absolutely. Uh -huh. But I mean, <laughs> but I, I, know, honestly, but he made demands. The issue with LeBron is it's passive aggressive. Mm, yeah. You don't always you don't know, know what he is. wants <laughs> until it's not what he wants. And, and I'm just quite frankly, and I'm sorry if I offend anybody, but Kobe's more polished than LeBron. Just end of story. And so in, again... What every, gives you that understanding? The seven languages he speaks? Then yeah, that, the yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and, having interacted right, with we'll him a little bit, but, <laughs> but yeah, all he's more polished. <laughs> and so when he goes up there and makes demands, I'm just it just comes across a little different hmm. than when it's LeBron, Rich, Maverick. These guys have been very unpolished and have been trying to polish themselves in that apparatus. On the basketball court, LeBron's as polished as anybody in the theater of polit corporate politics and things like that, very unpolished. And, and, and so, again, I'm not trying to demonize LeBron because I think his decisions are understandable. He should at some point reach an age where he, you know, not all the things I do and desire and want are proper. Uh, I, I think he should reach that conclusion. But, but, but I, I'm not going to, if I'm David Griffin, and when they announce LeBron is showing up, David Griffin knows how many different things, how many different things he promised to people he's now going to have to take back. Mm. I can't deliver on what I said I was going to do. Hey, David Black, you may get eviscerated here. Mm. Mm. Uh, <laughs> some of you players, Andrew Wiggins or whoever, you, well, you just got blew up in a letter and... Uh, <laughs> well, not Sports mentioned in a letter, right. which means... <laughs> Basically. Blown and up. And so... I just, I think that LeBron is a very unique human being coming through a very unique situation. And, and there are so many people that because of his success and because of where we are in a society now are, are so unwilling to question anything he does mm. that, that it's unhealthy. It's, he can't have the growth. And, and I'll tell you the other thing. This was my other big point. In, mm. in American society... We've been having a huge discussion for the last three years about uh, do the ends justify the means at the right. very top yeah. of our political structure. Yeah, yeah. We don't like the way you're going about it. Yeah. You know, okay, if you went about it differently, maybe we'd be on board with it. A and again, this is what I say about wealthy, entitled, pampered people. They don't care how they get it done. They just get it done. And if people's feelings get hurt along the way, and if the actions are inappropriate, screw you. And this is, and people have been upset with me, but I said, LeBron James, I'm just, he's not that much different from our president. He just comes at it from a different place. <laughs> what? And everybody gets all upset. But I'm just, when you're born with that kind of talent, and at 10 years old, grown men and women start catering to you for the rest of their lives, and you spend 25 years being catered to in 10 years being a poor kid in the hood, you're more like the 25 year experience than you are the, t the first 10 years. I Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show and be sure to check out more of the best clips from Speak For Yourself or go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.